Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an API with Fast API and PsychoPG3. I have already written all of the code here, so you don't have to. You can just copy and paste the code. All right, so first I am going to explain uh, the code, and then I will show you how to set it up and uh, do a demo of the API. All right, so first let's look here. This is the router. So I have built three versions of this API, um, and this is the first one. So you can see that we have our router initialized here. This is our to-do model. And we have a post request here to create the to-do. And you can see that we are creating a connection here. And then we are executing a SQL query with that connection. OK. And then this is uh, another function to get the to-dos. And you can see that we are using a row factory here. And we're using class row so that we can specify the model that we want to use, uh, which is this. So it'll do the mapping for us. All right, and then here is one to get one to do by the ID. And then we raise an exception 404 if it is not found. And then here is a method to update the to do. And then one to delete the to do. All right, for the second version of this API, um, I am using a connection pool. So instead of creating a connection every time there is a request, we are pulling a connection from a pool, using that connection, and then putting that connection back into the pool. So generally, this will be more performant than creating a connection every time. And so everything is pretty much the same, except that we are using uh, this pool to get the connection. And we are using this syntax here with pool.connection as con. Uh, this is a context manager in Python. And so what this will do is that it will automatically put the connection back to the pool after it's done with it. And if there were no exceptions, then it will uh, commit the SQL query. Right, so that's all happening within this context manager. Uh, the behavior is different in PsychoPG2. Um, while it does handle the transaction commit, it does not handle the put back of the connection to the pool uh, if there are exceptions. So that is an unexpected behavior in PsychoPG2, which they fixed in PsychoPG3. So just for your information. All right, so uh, here are the other methods to get the to-dos, get by ID, update the to-do, and delete the to-do. All right, so the third version of this is just like the second version, only we are using an async pool. Uh, so if we're using the async pool, then we'll have to use this async await syntax. So usually this will be uh, faster than the regular connection pool, uh, especially if you have an IO bound endpoint. Uh, and then you'll also have to use this async await syntax. But other than that, it's mostly the same as version two. All right, so this is the configuration. And we are using Pydantic base settings. And we can specify the environment file. So uh, locally, we can use a .env file um, to load in our environment variables. And then here, we have a get settings function. And we are using LRU cache so that we can always return the same instance of the settings object. Essentially, this uh, is a singleton. And then this is our DB file where we initialize our database connections. So we have um, our settings here, which we're getting from our config. 
And then this is our connection info, which has a key value pair um, you know, of our database credentials. And then uh, we have our git con function here, which always returns a new connection. Right. And then for our connection pool, uh, we are always returning the same instance of this connection pool and the same with the async connection pool. And then here is our main file. So we're getting the pool, the async pool. We're also including the router for uh, to do's version one, two, and three. And we have these two functions here. Um, the first one is uh, you can see that there's a loop here that loops every 10 minutes, and it runs this method called pool.check. And if you look at the Sego PG3 documentation, basically what this does is that it will make a small query to your database for each of the connections in the pool, uh, just to check that it's alive. And if the connection is broken, then it'll discard the connection and uh, generate a new one. So we're doing that for this and this. And then here is our uh, startup right, function where we are creating the task so that this is constantly running in the background. Uh, and this is called connection reaping. And it's just something that you have to do if you're working with connection pools. Otherwise, you could end up with broken connections, and then someone will hit your API, and then you'll get a uh, yeah, connection problem. All right, so here is uh, our migration file. So this is the table that we're going to create. Our .env file. Uh, which is git ignored. So this only exists here locally. And then this is our .env.example, our git ignore file, and our requirements file. So for the second part of this video, I am going to demonstrate how to get this running. All right, so first I'm going to open up terminal and I'm going to run python -m env to create my virtual environment. All right, and now I'm going to activate the virtual environment. Okay, and then I will run uh, pip install SAPI Ubicorn standard PsychoPG PsychoPG pool. All right, and then next, I will want to create uh, the database for this API. So I'll run psql do postgres dash c create database api psycho pg3. All right, so that created the database. And I'm going to want to run the migration. So pass in the file. And then it's created the table. OK. Now I will go to my uh, REST client. So I'm using Thunder Client here. And I'll create a new request. Um, actually, let me run the server first. I almost forgot to do that. 
So unicorn app dot name app reload. Now that that's running, I can go up here and let's try to create a to do. Um, so thousand v1 to do's and okay. I'm going to send this connection was refused but so oh Wrong port number. All right, send. Okay, and then that was successful. So now let's try to. Um, oh, uh, actually, I need to change this to post first. Okay, there we go. Uh, now let's let's do a get request. And. Send. All right, so there's our one to do. Uh, let's try switching over to the second version. Okay, and then the third version. All right. Um, all right, so so I, I want you to see this. All right, so let's go to back to version one and send. You can see that the time it took was 31 milliseconds. Now, if we do the second version, five milliseconds. Third version, five milliseconds. So just to give you an idea of uh, the performance difference of these three approaches. Okay, let's just make sure that the update and delete endpoints are working. So I'm gonna to go to put, and I'm gonna change this to bar true, and then send. Uh, oh, method not allowed, I forgot the ID, so. All right, so it says 200 okay, and we got back the response. Um, Let's go back to the get, and then there's our updated to-do. Uh, all right, and then let's delete this to-do, so put that one back. Okay, and then get. All right, now our list is empty. And that concludes this tutorial on how to build an API with FastAPI and PsychoPG3. For more resources on full stack web development, check out my website at fullstackbook.com. Thanks for watching.